Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark. So, I was going to kick off the video with a bit of an apology and say, I'm sorry, I didn't get a video out last week. We were busy, we were stressed, I meant to. But actually, you know what? It was Mental Health Awareness Week. We were doing lots and lots of stuff in the business. Simply didn't have time. And you can't let these things stress you out. So, we're back this week. Got a new video for you. And you know what? To make it a little bit special, we're going to dig into the Photon Engine. Now, I've been meaning to do this for quite some time. Now, last year, we had the whole announcement, the fanfare, the release of SQL Analytics inside Databricks. So that's the whole implementation of Redash. It's the querying engine. It's the, you can go there to do super fancy analytics style queries. And when we went in there, there was a little tempting little button saying Photon. And I keep calling it Proton. So apologies, Star Trek, Star Wars. I prefer Proton, but I have to say Photon. It's the Photon engine. And this is a new execution engine that's baked into SQL Analytics currently. It's the only place you can currently see it. And there's barely any information out there about it. So I'll be doing some digging, some testing, some looking at what's going to happen. And I want to give you a quick overview of essentially the things that are really going to be helped by Photon, the, thing, the areas that aren't really going to be helped, and kind of how you should think about it in your mind. Now, it is still in preview mode. So if you go in there into your endpoints in SQL Analytics, which itself is still in preview mode, you're going to have to accept the fact that it's in preview within the preview to enable it. So still not production workloads, but you should be able to start thinking, where can I use that? Which of my queries would benefit from that? And try and get that in the back of your head about where you can see some real improvements. So let's dive in and have a look. So I'm here in SQL Analytics. Remember, if you don't have this fancy little button down here, that probably means your workspace is not yet enabled for SQL Analytics. You can apply for the public preview um, or wait until it comes out. One of the two. Uh, until then, you won't see that little button. You won't be able to have a look at Photon yet. So inside Nanpoint, I've got the Photon Torpedo, uh, which is a cluster where I have enabled Photon. And I've been playing around looking at both sides. So I've got one which is Photon Torpedo and one which does not have Photon enabled. So as a quick reminder, that it's just literally a turn it on or off, uh, reminding you it's in preview, reminding you it's in preview. And this little, this is what it is. It's a polymorphic vectorized execution engine. Oh, oh that just sounds good, doesn't it? Um, what does that actually mean? So. We heard a little bit about this uh, in previous keynotes for the Data and AI Summit. Uh, and we had Reynolds Zen coming on talking us all about this is going to be a complete re-implementation of the existing, uh, essentially it's the, the tungsten engine, the kind of uh, the execution engine that takes all of the code, all of the execution plan that's been created by things like the Catalyst engine. So essentially you write some kind of Spark query, be it PySpark, be it Scala, be it SQL, that provides a set of steps going, this is what we need to do to actually query this data to return a result. That then gets passed into blocks that are executed in Java with traditional Spark. Now, this is now being re-implemented in C++. So the entire engine that works out your answer has been rewritten from the ground up. And it uses a process of vectorization, essentially finding ways to better bundle the data up and execute it in a more efficient way. Now, there is a ton of background information there, but it's currently hidden away in a few conference talks, um, in a few sessions. So I want to share some links about some super, super detailed things you can go to to learn a little bit about the secret source behind it. Um, but first, I want to show you a couple of bits and pieces about how I've been testing. So I've got my two different things sitting here. And in my queries, I've got a few things set up. So I started off going, you know what? I'm just going to get some taxi data. I'm going to run a quick query with a couple of averages, that kind of stuff, and a bit of a where clause. And I ran it between the two. So running it with Photon turned on and Photon turned off. And there's very little difference. And it was like a little bit underwhelming. It was like, oh, cool. Did, in, I think in one case, one of, one of my tests, the actual standard came back slightly faster because it's just luck of parallelism. It's not going to run at exactly the same time each time. And I was a little bit kind of confused until I dug into the deeper depths of what Photon is all about. So one of the uh, one of the major talks I'm going to link to, uh, which is 
this one, which is a beast of a technical deep dive by that Alex Bain. And he digs into, you know what? This is actually what Photon is and how they implemented it. And some of the real low level details uh, behind what's going on in there. So essentially some of the actual patterns that they've built into their execution engine to really, really make it work. And actually going through that, you start to realize going, so this isn't gonna help everything. This is one, it's an execution engine. So if there's parts of your Spark query that's not to do with just pure grunt execution, they're not gonna be optimized by using Photon. And two, there are specific things they've put in there, so specific workloads they have tackled to try and speed up. So it's not gonna speed up every single query. It's gonna speed up that gnarly specific query that people in the analytics space are trying to do that has historically been really bad in Spark. So it's like there is a targeted workload that they've said, we're gonna try and speed that one up. Um, and that's switched over. There's another talk that I'm also gonna point you to, uh, which is uh, Todd Greenstein talking about essentially sort of slightly more the positioning, or like sort of a bit about SQL analytics and some stuff with Photon under the hood. Uh, and that picture is actually the one I want to talk about. Uh, I was I was cheeky and I took a little screenshot of it. So how to get most performance out of Photon? It is good for large data sets. Sure. Economies of scale, this kind of execution engine is better when it's trying to do lots of stuff, uh, especially good at aggregations and joined and repeated slicing and dicing. So that kind of query pattern where you're doing lots of joins, in my example, I wasn't. And good aggregations, I had some aggregations in there, um, but I was filtering on top of my aggregations. So actually, when we got in that lower section, actually IO bound workloads, the majority of the time my query was spent running was actually doing the read, the initial read of data and then filtering it down to size. And then when it's done, the amount of execution work wasn't actually enough to really see that performance boost coming from Photon. And small data queries are also not great because of that. I guess the, the overhead of starting the query and finishing the query always has a bit of an overhead. And if there's all you're trying to do is optimize that little bit in the middle, you're not going to see that real, real performance improvement. So rearmed with that bit of information, there's certain kinds of workload that this is really good for and certain optimizations they put in, which if you're not hitting, you're not going to see the bonuses from. And that kind of, I kind of went back and tweaked, played around and changed the thing I was testing with. So let's just leave that. I've got my photon test query. So this is what I'm now working with. So this is New York taxi data. So I've just gone straight for the, grabbed a year's worth of New York taxi data. It's about 84 million rows in there. Uh, and I've got a whole range of some different aggregation functions, aggregation functions that include a calculation. And again, some of the specific um, vectorized functions they've put in have seen real, real benefits over things like multiplication, division, uh, you know, kind of cell based, essentially calculations that we're doing on a cell by cell basis that they can then vectorize and improve. So including some of those things to try and just edge uh, the kind of things. We're doing some joins, we're doing some group buys. So it's trying a little bit more to hit the kind of workload we want to see. Uh, now, really nicely in SQL Analytics, we do have our query history window, which is animating really weirdly. Cool. <laughs> and I can show you a couple of different ones. So I ran it, essentially, I did a cold start. So I played around, got a load of things working, turned both endpoints off, turned them both on and said, you go, then you go. I made a slight change to the query, you go, then you go, just to try and get an idea of how performance is working. So which way around are we? Okay, so we're talking about a few different ones. So I've got my queries that took almost a minute. It's like my first quick check. So this one running in uh, on the Photon server first, we can kind of dig into that and say what happened in here. So you can see it's that same query. Uh, we can see what happened in there. We can see it took 55 seconds and we can hop over and get the, the results. So we can see it read about 400 meg of data. Uh, we can see this wasn't cached at all, uh, which is good. You can see how many files were read, didn't spill out over any bytes. And then that one, oh, ooh, you can't quite see. All right down at the bottom, we've got task time in Photon. So essentially, how much was this query using the Photon Engine? Answer, a lot. Um, so that took 55 seconds. It's pretty good, it's all right. 84 million rows, it's not too shabby. Uh, and that went off. So there's a little bit of compilation, a little bit of result fetching. 49 seconds was the execution. That's how long it took just spinning away, trying to work through that data. Now, switching over and say, run the exact same thing, again, cold start, this time on my standard endpoint without Photon, and it's 
actually not too dissimilar a story. So this time it ran in 55 seconds. So yeah, definitely slower. Not that much slower, but definitely slower. Uh, and then we can dig in and we see, well, it read the same amount of data. So actually a part of that execution is just pure reading data from disk, which isn't going to be affected by the improved execution engine because it still has to go and read that data. Uh, but then we look down at the bottom, we can see that 0% task time in Photon. So yes, there are improvements to my query if I switch to using Photon by a matter of five seconds. Not huge, not, not game changing, but then I'm not dealing with, you know, insane amounts of data here. Now to try and make that a little bit better, uh, I reran the query. Now, um, SQL Analytics does use caching. So if you just hit go and you haven't changed the query, it'll, just say, it'll take like three, four seconds again. Oh, it's the same. Here's your results again. So what I did is I changed it around a little bit. Uh, just off that. So I changed it around a little bit and said, how about we run the same query, but we just tweak one thing. So here I've changed it to a max. I've said, actually, I want to slightly change the query. So you need to go back and work it out again. You need to execute it again. But, but uh, in SQL Analytics, it's using the L series of VM behind the scenes or the L or S, one of those two, which means it is Delta cache enabled. So if you're querying from a Delta table, it's going to have cached the actual Delta column store segments. So it's not going to have to do as much data retrieval. Essentially, I've taken an ax to the IO and said, forget the big chunky IO bit. How long does it actually take you to do execution? So over here, we see a little bit more. So 100% of this came from cache. So I only read 265 megs, so it's pulled it down. It's compressed it locally. It's nice and a little bit easier. It's still not using any of the, um, the Photon Engine. Again, I'm hidden by my face. Sorry, hello. And I can see zero percentage task time in Photon here. Um, it's just a 36 seconds. And then switching over to the Photon side of things, um, again, similar idea. This time again, coming 100% from cache. Um, this time only took 17 seconds. Now that's a much, much bigger chop. So actually what we're starting to see is queries which are heavily, heavily IO, you're not really gonna get any improvement. Queries which is read a bit of data and then do huge amounts of calculation in memory, you're gonna see a real big factor of improvement of using the Photon Engine. And I think that's the real take, right? Right. It's the, it is geared to attack very specific types of query and it's going to attack a part of that query. So if you're reading and writing data using it, eh, it's, it's not really going to help. It might help a little bit, uh, but anytime you're doing computation, anytime you've got mathematical calculations, you've got aggregations, you've got joins, all of that stuff that requires comparing data and actually inspecting the data and performing some kind of hash aggregate or analysis on it, it's going to actually improve things. And we can, we can go even deeper in here. So actually what we can do is we can take the other one and we do actually have this little button. So in SQL analytics, it seems like it's completely devoid of spark. It's like, it's, there's no spark here. It's just, you write some SQL and it does a thing, but you do have the, Ooh, it's a little secret button, which takes you to probably a fairly familiar view, which is, this is what's happening at the SQL execution engine, which is the same view you get via the spark UI. If you go and have a look at a query. So we're going to see what it's doing. So it was doing a few things. It worked out that it was broadcast hash join. So it's still using the good Spark um, native execution. It's worked out that these table, these lookup tables are small enough to go. Uh, they're under the auto broadcast threshold. So it's broadcast them. Doing short, uh, short aggregates, doing a few different things. So we can go and inspect and say what's going on inside there. And actually, if we inspect it on the photon side of things, oh, got extra colors. So now we can see these are the points where it's actually taking advantage of the Photon Engine as opposed to the traditional engine. So we can actually see a little bit more about what it's doing at each stage. And we start to work through here and go, so what are you actually doing inside? You can kind of see in terms of the steps it's going through, it's going through slightly more steps, but actually the slightly more efficient steps. Now I've not actually dug too much in terms of what's actually happening here. We can follow it through. We can see it's got some different executions. So it's doing things like a number of spill partitions, Ooh. which I'm assuming is how it's actually sort of building out the extra parts it used to achieve the vectorization. And there's extra elements we can go into explore of that. And I have not dug anywhere near as much as I should have done into this depth yet. But I'd say that's, it's kind of a good start to that journey of understanding where Photon's going to come in, how it's going to change our patterns, how it's going to change our workloads. 
And it's having all those things in mind of going, what kind of thing am I doing? Am I just bringing data up and then filtering it and then just showing a filter result set? I'm not really gonna, not really gonna see any umph. It's gonna be a slightly disappointing. Am I bringing data up and doing lots of calculations? Am I trying to change things around? Am I gonna do lots of interesting, weird things? Suddenly you will see a massive benefit. Now, oh, I don't know if I can find in my history of the various different changes I made, but not everything is currently supported by uh, Photon. So this is an interesting example. So I had this one. So I wrote kind of fairly basic things, doing an account, doing some stuff. I could see that was, again, 99% task time in Photon. Good. We like it. Uh, and then I was like, well, let's change it up. Why don't we do something weird? I'm going to use, oh, well, add some averages, sums and things. Why don't we do a collect set? It's a very sparky aggregation function. So that's saying, I want you to actually take all the distinct values of this and actually pop it into a an array function, um, which again, super useful. You can write it in normal Spark. And if we switch over, we see suddenly the task time in Photon's gone down to 20%. Essentially, I used a function that is not yet Photon enabled. So you've got to be a little bit careful when you're writing your queries about how Photon friendly they are. Are you using the fairly substandard SQL mathematics statistics kind of things? They're probably Photon enabled they'll smash right through. Or you're using some of the more esoteric sparky things, they might not be enabled yet. So certainly as of last year, when they were looking at it, kind of uh, things like window functions weren't enabled yet. Things like, you know, kind of interesting spark aggregate functions not enabled yet. Uh, certain data types, like I think binary wasn't enabled when we were looking at this around last September, October time. So it's worth keeping an eye on uh, where things are and as they're progressing and as they're improving. But there's just some super, super interesting stuff in there. Now, one of the problems, the real problems that we've got here is because it's inside SQL Analytics, which is, is itself a preview program. And because when you're looking at endpoints, this is itself a preview program. Uh, there are some things that we can't with. Basically, there's not a lot of documentation behind it. You know, you dig into um, SQL endpoints when you're in, you know, the, the Azure Databricks documentation. And there's essentially one little point when it mentions Photon, which is just saying, there's a button you can turn on. That's it. No details about the Photon execution engine, how it works under the hood, what's actually happening inside of there, how you get the most out of it. That is all still to come. So definitely interesting what we actually see inside Photon. Now, again, those two talks I mentioned give you a hell of a lot more detail about what's going on inside there. Hence why I'm happy to talk about these things because it's all out in public space. Um, but yeah, if you're using SQL Analytics already, Try out some of those queries. Have a look at some of the queries you've been putting through Photon and just go, is it meeting those boxes? Is it using the kind of things Photon has been targeted to? And yeah, super, super interesting. And honestly, huge amounts of potential there for speeding up that kind of BI analytics workloads. Especially things like if you're doing any kind of financial services analysts, if you're looking at kind of like the time series analysis and you're doing trends over time and you're doing lots of small calculations over a vast amount of data, that kind of thing we can see speeding up a huge amount. So anything with like complex calculations, any kind of we're doing some interesting, anything we're doing less iterative and just applying the same calculations over and over again to lots and lots of different data, we're going to see that real targeting of the execution portion of your workload. If it's just with all the time, it's just reading the data, it's not going to speed up. So yeah, that is my, my findings so far as I dig and dive deeper and deeper into the Photon Engine. I'm looking forward to the Data and AI Summit that's coming up next week, which I'm sure has plenty more information and some announcements and other things that are going on. I don't know yet. I'm excited myself. Um, and I'll be doing several sessions there. So do come along. I'll be loitering in the hallways. There's a hallway chatter thing. Come along and say hello. And yeah, otherwise, let me know if you have gotten to SQL Analytics and you've tried out Photon. Let me know what kind of things that you've seen have made a difference. Let me know if there's any workloads that based on this, you go, oh, yeah, no, that's really going to help us out. It'd be super interesting to hear if the use cases that you would want to target with this and if you're planning to adopt Photon and just kind of tick that little switch as soon as you can. All right, as always, do not forget to like and subscribe. If you're new here and this is your first video, hello, welcome. I do lots of this nerdy stuff. And otherwise, we'll see you again next time. Cheers.